Hey, good day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to talk to you a bit about multiomic compositional data. I've made this talk because I think navigating this space can be a little bit tricky, and I've seen on more than one occasion people make mistakes in um, deploying some of the more popular compositional data analysis methods, notably the centered log ratio transformation. And I'm hoping that this talk will sort of clarify why and how to approach multiomics data uh, in the context of using transformations like the CLR. So this will be a relatively short talk, I think. The outline will look something like this. I'll talk a bit about what are compositional data and then talk a bit about what multiomics data are. I'll introduce what I call the two simplex problem and discuss some approaches to tackling the two simplex problem. And then in a follow-up talk, I'll go through a little bit of a code example that shows how this might be done in practice. So I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you already take it for granted that sequencing data are compositional. And what I mean by that is that they're proportional data. They carry relative information, not absolute information. And it's helpful, I think, to think about them in the way we visualize them most often, which is through the use of stacked bar charts or pie charts. So in the microbiome, we may uh, project a, a sample based on the different phyla that are represented um, using some type of stacked bar plot here, where each color represents a different um, taxonomic group. And the size of that bar represents their, the uh, presence of that group within the sample. You could also use a pie chart, which is communicating similar information, although there's some controversy around pie charts because these angles can be harder to interpret than simply the size of the bars over here. A key point about proportions, though, is that their sum has a fixed total. In other words, they sum to one. So when you add up all of the tax in one of these bars, you get 100%. When you add up all the area in this pie chart, you get 100%. And because of this fixed amount, an increase in one of these groups, say the firmicutes, means that all of the other groups must decrease to make room for that increase and to preserve that fixed total. The consequences of this is that proportional data, like compositional data, have a very unusual geometry. They don't exist in the kind of space we naturally and intuitively think about data. They exist in a space that we call the simplex. Let's say we're considering gut microbiome data, and we're only considering three bacteria taxa. We'll call these A, B, and C. We can represent the samples, the gut microbiome samples, within this triangle, where if the point is at the center, it means that the three bacteria, A, B, and C, are equally represented in that sample. So they would have the values like 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33. And if we drew a point near one of the points of the triangle, like we do with this blue dot here, we are saying that the gut microbiome is largely made up of C. So it may have the numbers 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0.90. And any point within this would define the different proportions of these three bacteria. But you can never have more than 100% of C, or more than 100% of B, or more than 100% of A. So it creates this triangle that closes in the observed values that the microbiome can take. Now, when it comes to compositional data analysis, the simplex must be addressed in some way. And this is usually done with some form of pre-processing through a type of log ratio transformation. These log ratio transformations invoke a reference and that reference is used as a denominator against which to compare the other variables being measured. The denominator reference could be a single feature, as in the case of the additive log ratio transformation, or ALR. It could be the geometric mean of the sample, as is the case in the centered log ratio transformation, or the CLR. Or it could be that you consider every single feature one at a time as a reference and perform the analysis on all possible pairwise log ratios. So in the case of three variables, 
x1, x2, x3. You might consider 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and 2 over 3. Whichever of these three approaches you take, the equation you use would look something like this, where you take the log of the different uh, feature input, x1, x2, all the way up to the final one, xd, and you divide them by the reference that you've computed. The reference you choose can help you interpret the analysis. Let's say you're looking at three variables and quite a few samples distributed along this simplex, where some of the samples have a majority of the second variable and some of the samples have a majority of the third variable. You could, for example, take the first variable as a reference to perform an AOR transformation and project the data into a new space. And on the right plot, that's what we see. The x-axis here represents one log ratio with the second variable divided by the first, and the y-axis represents another log ratio with the third variable divided by the first. So in this case, we have a single data set represented by a single simplex, and we're choosing a single reference to perform a single transformation to project the one data set into a new space. Now, when it comes to multi-omics data, we have many views of the same sample. We're often collecting these multiple views with a question, or at least an implied question, which is how does one of these data sets relate to the other, or how do variables within one of the data sets relate to the other? Now, in general, I see four approaches to answering this question. You can use a univariate univariate method where you take one column from the first data and you compare it with one column from the second data. And let's say you use a correlation to see how they vary with one another. You can use univariate multivariate methods where you take one column from the one data set and you predict that as a function of all of the variables of the second data set. And you might use something like a penalized linear regression for this, a lasso. You can take a multivariate multivariate approach where you take one entire data set and you correlate it with a whole nother data set using a single model, like a canonical correlation analysis or partial least squares regression. These are the types of methods that are implemented in the mixomics package for microbiome data analysis. Or you can take a more um, elaborate approach to the problem and use neural networks. Now, regardless of which of these approaches you take, we should be asking ourselves the question, what happens when both of the data are compositional? What I mean by that is each of the data sets is in its own right a simplex. And so we now have two simplexes and we need to do some integrative analysis between the two simplexes. The first view, let's say we're looking at seven samples with three variables, three bacteria. We see that some of the samples have lots of C, some of the samples have lots of B, and there's this continuation here. But we also have the second view now where we're looking at the same seven samples with three different variables, let's say they're metabolites, and some of the samples have lots of F, while some of the samples have lots of E. And the question becomes, how do we relate these two simplexes? Well, when we have two simplexes, we need two references. And I think there exists the temptation to analyze this using a single reference, a single transformation or a single normalization where the variables from one of the data sets represented by you, like your microbes, and the variables from the other data set represented by V, let's say your metabolites, are concatenated and then a single CLR is applied onto that whole concatenated data. But this is implying that these two variables belong to the same simplex when in fact they, are, they belong to separate simplexes as we saw in the previous visualization. So what we should be actually doing is concatenating two transformations of the data. So one transformation of the first data set, let's say using the CLR of the microbes U, and a separate transformation of the second data set, let's say metabolites represented by V. And so the final data set we would perform our analysis of, whether it's univariate or multivariate or deep neural networks, however you approach it, 
should be the concatenation of the two transformations as represented here. And so my main reason for making this video is to highlight this key point here, which is when using CLR methods or any compositional method on multi-omics data, we should make sure that it is a multi-omics CLR. And so we recently got a matters arising paper accepted where we talk a bit about multi-omics compositional data analysis in general and why it's so important to do these transformations on the data set separately and not jointly, and how failing to do so could cause some more traditional methods like Pearson's correlation or newer methods like proportionality to appear like they're doing very poorly. But once the transformation is applied correctly, that is on the two data sets separately, these methods can begin to actually perform quite nicely for multi-omics data integration. Thank you.